Hello and welcome to another video from Specialist Components. It's been a little while since we've done the last video, but that's because we've moved units, so we're now in our new meeting room to do this video. Um, we thought we'd, we'd do this uh, this tech video. It's quite involved, so if you've got any questions, pop them down the bottom and we'll get back to you. But this video is all about our ECU um, swaps for minis and our fuel injection systems to complement it. And we thought we'd start with what should be the simplest one but uh, isn't and that's the SPI Mini. So the SPI Mini kit we do is very straightforward to look at but it sort of it takes a lot of the issues out of your car. Um, so what we do is we manufacture an adapter harness which goes from our um, Delta 400 ECU um, back to the standard um, chassis harness on, on the car in the engine bay. So what you do is you remove your standard rover ECU, put our ECU in its place, put the adapter harness in, turn the ignition on, press the throttle pedal five times, which calibrates your standard Rover um, idle valve, and then you're good to go. What it does, um, obviously wheel supplied with a map to suit a tuned car, a standard car, or a Cooper car, so the wheel just fire up and run. What it allows you then to do is to use the software for the Delta 400, along with our CAN interface um, tuning dongle, it connects into the communications port on the adapter harness here and you've effectively got control over all of your ignition timing, all of your fueling um, to tune the car to its optimum. So if you've put a different exhaust system on or you've put a modified cylinder head or any of those combinations, a camshaft overboard, it's, the stock ECU system won't be able to cope. And as time goes on, you do develop a lot of um, electrical issues with the, um, the ECU itself. The internal map sensor breaks down, puts the car into default, which is overfueling the car all the time. And you just get all sorts of issues. This kit, um, for a standard car, you can just replace it and the car will work exactly as it did. Or if you've tuned it, it allows you then to fully, fully tune the car. Um, all of your clocks work as standard. Everything works as it did. Your immobilizer system is still uh, effective. Um, and it's a really good drop on and on a standard car. Standard car in good condition with a standard rover ECU working. Just swapping this kit on really livens the car up with one of our dyno cars. Um, as standard rover, apart from it idle, rover overfueled the engine and they, retard, they ran retarded ignition timing. And they did that with all the cars. We'll talk about that a bit more in, in, later on. So what that does is they basically they develop one calibration to suit hundreds of thousands of cars rather than individual calibrations for each car so by running retarded ignition keeps it safe from detonation running it rich does the same but what that does is it gives the car a slightly sluggish feel and it's slightly lazy and it isn't as it isn't as playful on a standard car if you drop our system onto it and um, it immediately livens it up because the fueling is brought back to where it should be the ignition time is how the engine wants it it is very lively, really playful, and it feels like a tuned engine, even on a standard engine. You know, you'll typically pick up um, eight, nine horsepower, eight, nine pounds for the torque, but that'll be everywhere in the rev range. So every time you drive the car, you'll feel it's more, it's more responsive, revs more freeing, it's got more torque everywhere, and those characteristics carry on when you tune the car. Uh, you can still keep your standard catalyst and lambda sensor, and they run as standard. Um, so that's the, that's the, the what looks like a, a basic um, first system, but it's really good for making the most of the rover hardware. The next stage on top of this uh, is you keep for an SPI is you keep all of this system, and then you add in our throttle body system. So what you do is replace the ECU as standard, take the standard rover hardware off the engine in terms of the air cleaner assembly, the manifolds, and all that sort of thing. Take it off replaced with our high efficiency twin injector setup and um, this system we've been using and uh, with it, it, it's it's a magic system for over 10 years now and what we've done is um, we've brought it, the way to look at this system is to think of it as an electronic carburetor rather than trying to port inject the engine which is virtually impossible on the Siamese engine we've developed a really neat electronic carburetor so we have two injectors um, which get fired twice per cycle, uh, billet throttle body. And what that does is, even on a closed throttle, I'll show you the throttle, you, every um, EFI kit gets our neat fuel assembly with a big full radius ra uh, ram pipe in. Uh, and this one's a shaftless throttle system. So you can see there's very, very little restriction. 
just the, just the thickness of the blade. So this is our 45 millimeter throttle body, which because it's a shaftless system and has got very little cross-sectional area, the cross-sectional area of this 45 millimeter and throttle body versus an HIF 44 carburetor, there's probably 25% more cross-sectional area available, which means that this will support a lot more power efficiently than a, um, an HIF carburetor. So the principle of the system is we pulse the injectors every cycle. That generates a, a, a very homogeneous mixed um, air fuel um, cloud behind the throttle, which the engine then draws on. So that's how it works like a carburetor. We, we don't try and inject in the port because that's virtually impossible. Um, we just create a mix that's the correct mix for what the engine wants because you can map it correctly, you can tailor it to how it wants to be, but it means that the engine draws what it needs, like it is with a carburetor, but it's not relying on depression of um, venturi over the jet to pull the fuel in. So what that means is you get a much better mix down the cylinders, um, you don't get any pooling of the, of the fuel, it doesn't sit in the inlet runners, um, and this all packages in a mini with this little air, little air filter, and it's very efficient. Like I said, this is a 45 millimeter version, um, we do a 50 millimeter version as well for the high power variants, which is the same uh, architecture effectively, just with a much larger, uh, much larger throttle. And this, we'd use a 45 millimeter up to engines to 90 to 95 horsepower. So typically cars with an SW5 cam or an AC Dodd RS Plus cam, uh, Piper 255, Ken 266, 276, something like that. Once you get into camshafts, 280 degrees and above, so that's your SW10s, your 286s, things like that. We'll automatically go on a 50 millimeter because the power band is going to be further up the rev range. But wherever possible, like we say, we use a 45 millimeter because in everyday driving, it'll always drive better having a slightly smaller throttle, even though it's not restrictive, than having a bigger throttle. So this is the SPI upgrade kit. Uh, like I say, you get the ECU system as we talked about earlier, you get the throttle body system. Um, your fueling all stays the same apart from you do have to change your fuel pump element for a, a, an MPI version because we run on, a, on a, a fuel pressure system of 48 psi. A standard SPI will only run 14 psi and you do get a, a regulator to go along with it in the system. And it's a fixed regulator which is three and, um, three and a half bar, 48 psi and it's a simple uh, in and out um, version. Does it is rising rate for turbocharged cars, um, but typically you'll only use the two uh, outlets here. The SPI car has two fuel lines in it, so typically what you would do is in the engine bay you would have the fuel delivery system into this side, and you'd have the regulator somewhere on the return side, so it always keeps the pressure in the fuel rail at 48 psi. So this is a really neat, and it does mean you can it revolutionises SPIs. And you can tune them, you can still pass your MOT emissions with a CAT. Really good system. Next one we'll talk about is the what we call the carburetor based cars. So this is cars up to the SPI where they've always fit, they were always fitted with a distributor and carburetors. This part stays the same. I'll move this lot to one side. So that stays the same. We'll move a few more parts into the picture. See for a carburetor car, you need a lot more hardware to get to work like an, an original injected car. So we've talked about the throttle body a little bit. Uh, I'll move that to one side. So the the other parts that you need to get a carburetor car to work um, efficiently, like an SPI or MPI, is it needs a crank trigger system. Um, this is our system here, which is keyed on the back, so it sits in, into the front of your crankshaft damper. Uh, it's keyed so it doesn't rotate this hub. This is uh, the trigger wheel with a vernier adjustment on it, so you can set it very easily once it's fitted to the engine. We supply it with a high tensile bolt and washer system to hold on to, onto the uh, crankshaft. This um, is the actual um, sensor part itself in the bracket, and this sits on your timing cover case uh, and aligns with the, uh, the crank trigger. We supply instructions with this um, to show you how to set it up, and the vernier adjustment makes it really easy to do. So. For an engine to work correctly, it needs a crank trigger signal, that's vital. It also needs an air temperature um, signal, which the SPI car already has. 
and we supply this neat little um, external air temp sensor which you can sync into the backlit of the air filter or most people tend to just on the wiring tuck it underneath the, the um, the fuel rail just to keep it out of the road. As long as it's in the vicinity of the air that's going into the engine, works perfectly. So you need a crank trigger, an air temp sensor, and a water temp sensor. So in this case, this is our billet thermostat housing which we make in-house. This is our little Bosch sensor, which reads the temperature of the water coming out of the engine once it's gone through the cylinder head. We do that for two reasons. Um, our ECU system's got quite a sophisticated um, control system for the idle and the fueling. So on when it's a very cold day and you've got to start the engine, the EC needs to know where you know how cold the air is, how cold the water is, and from that we've got proportional tables which you can tune yourself and um, depending on where you are in the world to add extra fuel into the engine when it's cold and then to take the fuel out when the temperature rises. And that's why we have a water temperature sensor. We also use the sensor as a, um, a safety protection device so that. We've got a very things like we've got a very rev limiter in the engine, so until the water temperature gets to say 50 degrees, you can hold the revs at four and four and a half thousand, which means you can't jump in your car on a cold day, go racing off down the road, revving, you know, revving to very high revs and damaging your engine. It'll, it'll actually hold the rev the revs of the engine then until the water temperature gets into it, into the working range of 70, 85 degrees, and then it'll increase the rev limit. Modern uh, modern cars have, have this system, all of the BMW M cars have it, and it's a safeguard for protecting the engine. So uh, we've got a crank sensor for the engine um, location, air temp, water temp. In terms of sensors to make an engine run, that's pretty much all we need. Um, part of the carb carburetor kit, you get a, a little system of a, a coil pack and a bracket. It's a fairly modern wasted spark coil pack. Custom ignition leads to suit the 5.4 engine. Um, so this gets rid of your distributor, this, both these parts get rid of your distributor, um, fuel system gets rid of the, um, the carburetors. The, um, the fuel pump, so the easiest way to do the fuel system on a carburetor car is to fit either an SPI fuel tank or an MPI fuel tank. Uh, this way you have an integral fuel, um, fuel pump already, it fits into a, a saloon car um, as a standard tank and the wiring is quite straightforward. Again, any comments or questions on that, drop us, um, drop us a question below. Things like the vans and pickups are slightly tricky because they've got a flat four and a little log, um, a log tank. In that case, you have to use an external fuel pump system. And again, any questions, drop us a message and we'll talk you through that. We keep external fuel pumps and things on the, on the shelf to help you guys out with that sort of system. Um, but yeah, any questions on that, drop us a, drop us a message. The wiring loom on a carburetor car, we, we try and make this as easy as possible. To wire to wire the uh, wire the car in because the wiring is typically what tends to go wrong on a classic mini or any type of car. So these are all machine made looms to suit the application. Like right, so this carburetor car, this is the uh, ACU connection. On this side we have um, the two connections going to the car. So the red wire is a permanent 12 volt and the white wire is a switch 12 volt. They're typically the top two fuses on a mini fuse box. From there, the ECU takes over the power distribution of the rest of the um, the rest of the harness, takes all of the issues out of the car. The lead next down, that's a communications lead, same as it was on the SPI, so you can talk to our CAN dongle, to our software, talk to the ECU. Uh, moving on, I'll talk about a couple of things back up here in a second. Moving on down here, you have, that's a crank wire, that's a water wire. They come labelled up, so that one says uh, crank on it, and that one says CLT for coolant, uh, coolant temperature. Um, coil connector, that's the earth strap, typically goes onto the um, the engine steady on the centre side of the block. And then that's the throttle position sensor, that's the air temp sensor, and that's the two um, injector plugs. And it doesn't matter which way around you get them, get those because you pulse them every cycle. Um, we might as well talk about this additional feature on the carburetor loom while we're here. Um, this system on um, any of the any of the um, EFI systems is compatible for turbo cars, which we there's a lot of the guys use them because it's much harder to set a carburetor car up for boost, um, even in a normally aspirated car, and they're hard enough. So on a turbo car, you want to keep control over the, the boost press pressure in the engine. So we have a boost solenoid point here, and we have a map sensor point here. So you can calibrate the car on map only. So when it comes on boost, you can uh, calibrate the fueling. 
and then with the boost solenoid you can control the boost pressure through the rev range. You, on the throttles themselves, you also have a throttle position sensor, so you can blend between the two calibrations. So you can, when it's not on, when the engine's not on boost, you can use throttle position. As it comes on the boost, you can use a map sensor. It, it, it's just um, a bit of versatility. On a, um, a car which is going to be turboed, we supply, rather than the air filter system or the ramp pipe, we supply this simple looking tube. Sits into the front of the, uh, in the front of the throttle body, and that then, allows you to, uh, from your intercooler, uh, on the pressure side, you just go straight into this this tube. You don't need any plenums or any other features at that point. And it, um, it just simplifies the plumbing. And that's that's all you need. Boost pipe from your intercooler onto here, and off you go. So that's a carburetor kit. Um, the trickiest part of the carburetor kit is fitting the trigger wheel to the front of the, uh, of, the of the engine. You've typically, you can do it in the car, jack the engine up, remove the radiator, take the engine mount off from the radiator side, fit the damper pulley, set your gap up, and then drop it back in. The rest of it, changing this is just like fitting a carburetor. Um, if you use an SPI MPI fuel tank, that's just like fitting a fuel tank. And this loom literally drops on within two minutes once your hardware is in place. And again, you've got full control over all of your ignition timing, all of your, um, all of your fueling, and it just, it just revolutionizes the way a carburetor car works. I'm going to push all this to one side again. Bear with me. And we'll talk about um, the MPI. The MPI Mini is is getting very popular for tuning. A lot of people are tuning the engines overboard and putting different camshafts in. And like the SPI, Rover will run them slightly rich with slightly soft ignition time, which makes them feel a bit, you know, soft and furry and not very nice to drive. Again, dropping this, the uh, Delta 400 on with our complete, we supply a complete engine harness for the MPI. It's the only ignition, um, injected round of, of Rover Mini that we do supply a harness for because there was only ever one. And it's a full harness. So it integrates with your multifunction relay pack as standard. Um, your lambda sensor plugs in as standard. We've taken some features out that we don't need and it's tailored just to take our ECU, but it'll lie in the, in the engine bay exactly as an MPI system does, plug into our ECU exactly in the same position the Rover ECU went. Um, fuel pressure regulator in the same place as the SPI on the other side of the, of the supply. So literally everything on an MPI is engine bay related. This is all in the engine bay, this is engine bay, this is engine bay. You leave the fuel system alone because the MPI fuel pump is really good. It'll support a lot of power, it's got a lot of flow. And um, again, it revolutionizes the way an MPI Mini drives. A standard MPI Mini with the, the Delta 400 kit and our little throttle body, even on standard car, it's gonna be 10, 12 horsepower up and it'll drive like a really tuned engine. We see a lot of MPIs and SPIs running 260 degree cams. Uh, hot heads and they'll typically get into the mid 90s 95 horsepower region without any effort at all still really drivable pass the emissions on the catalyst tests and uh, you can just have all the fun you would have with a carburetor car with an mpi it un completely unleashes the um the tuning capability and what you want to do with the car you know you can go 1460 you can you know go high compression do whatever you want but once you've got control over the fueling ignition timing you can bring it all back so it absolutely maximizes what you can do with the car. Um, that's a bit of a run through of it. The, all of the information on D400 and the, so the software is a free download on our website. On the download section, jump on, download it, have a look around it. There's lots of tech info there on the ECU as a read through manual. Um, there's lots of maps on it, the dynographs available. If you've got any questions, uh, let us know and we look forward to hearing from you. Cheers.